Hey, welcome back to Cruising with Wheels. I'm Kevin, as you know, and this is Frank. Hey. Today we're talking about cattle prods, crowbars, huh? and duct tape. And we're not talking about murders, folks. <laughs> so stay tuned. We're going to talk through some things that we take on our cruise that most people wouldn't be thinking to take. Why? Because Frank goes in a wheelchair and we're good Boy Scouts and like to be prepared. That's right. So Frank's going to walk through uh, what he has made up in his little toolkit. We're going to tell you a little bit how uh, things go later on in the video with the TSA. Right. Now, I have my own wheelchair mm -hmm. uh, at this point, it, uh, and we're going to show you a picture of it so you know what I travel in. It's an Everest and Jennings Traveler L4 manual wheelchair. Now, we've seen a lot of these wheelchairs as we've been cruising uh, throughout the years. Yeah, it's amazing what you notice. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really, it seems that this company makes a, a good product. We are not being endorsed by them. We do not get a kickback from them. They did not give Frank his wheelchair for free. Yeah, we, we just researched online, and as usual, Kevin found the best deal. We ordered it online. We were able to pick the actual size because you can have a regular seat, or in my case, because I'm six foot two, a deeper seat if you're a tall person like I am. Correct. Now, and I it was shipped right to our house. I can't remember the name of the company that I found it from, but I'm sure that Frank, the master keeper of records, <laughs> yes. uh, will, um, will research it, go through oh, yeah. his files. You know I have the receipt in our travel folder. And I'll link it in the description <laughs> below so that you can, you can have that. Now, uh, in the past, uh, I rented a wheelchair through like Care Vacations mm -hmm. or Special Needs at Sea for mm -hmm. Frank. And um, I think that that year we went on two cruises. Right. And when I added up what it was going to cost to rent the wheelchair for those two cruises, right. I could buy it, practically buy a wheelchair. Right. So what it really helped with was... Um, the wheelchair hopping that I would have to do um, from, first of all, leaving the house and getting into the car, and then getting into the airport and getting their airport wheelchair to get me to the gate, and then getting off the plane at our destination, and uh, getting into the cab, getting to the port we were leaving out of, getting into the port's wheelchair, getting on the cruise ship, getting out of their wheelchair once we were to the room and then getting into the rented wheelchair. So I was constantly wheelchair hopping. It was a real hassle. And after a long day of, of traveling, you know, getting up early at 2, 3 in the morning, early flight out, it's a long day. And uh, that said, uh, lots of wheelchair hopping doesn't help. So Kevin said, listen, this is crazy. You're going to get your own wheelchair, uh, and you're going to be able to leave the house more often uh, than you do now. So I'm able to go places and go shopping with Kevin and, and kind of get out in the house more. So um, it, was a good, it was a good purchase. So we invested in this wheelchair. Uh, it's the Traveler L4. And um, Frank's going to go down uh, a short little list of the specifications on right. it. Um, the first one I'm very thankful for, yes. it's only 37 pounds. So if you're going to be, um, say, taking mom or dad, or uh, maybe your spouse is requiring a wheelchair for travel, you want to get the, um, the uh, lightest version you can afford. So this was within our budget. It was only 37 pounds, and typically what I was finding was, like 50 pounds. 
So it's, it's considered a lighter weight right. wheelchair. Very sturdy, but very lightweight. 37 pounds, it's, you know, fold, it collapses and folds up, and Kevin is able to pick it up and put it into the trunk of the back of our car. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice. It's only 28 inches wide when it's open. Um, it is 36 inches high. And the depth of the seat, you can special order. And that depends on your weight. Now, the standard uh, seat is 16 well, and, inches. And your height. And, right, and your height. And your height, because again, I'm six foot two. So, so we didn't necessarily get the deeper seat for Frank's weight. Um, it was just an added bonus. It is, because with the, the standard 16 inch depth seat, um, a shorter person than what I am, and it only uh, takes a max weight of 250 pounds. The 18 inch depth seat, which is for me because I'm six foot two, is a maximum weight of 300. So thankfully I'm far away from that, but I used to be 300 uh, after I got sick. So now as you all know, I'm on a diet. And I, I, want, I want you all to consider also when you're traveling, what do you have with you? Yeah, luggage. luggage. Tote bag. So, let's stuff. say you're 200 pounds. You might have a 50-pound suitcase on your lap. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like the, I'm like the, uh, the four-wheel dolly. <laughs> I'm in the wheelchair, but I've, I'm holding tote bags and luggage on my lap as Kevin's wheeling me around. Or I have the... Uh, rolling luggage on each side of me and he's pushing me in the wheelchair and I've got you know two-handed and we're whipping through the airport. It's quite the sight <laughs> quite if the you fight. ever see it. Maybe we can get somebody to take a picture uh, on this next cruise because it really is funny. He's got the luggage stacked, he's got his tote bag on, on his uh, lap and he's holding both the rolling uh, bags on either side. I'm pushing him and I've got uh, my backpack on him. We're trucking and we're along. we're whipping through the airport and I'm trying not to hit people as we're going by with the luggage. So watch out. Y'all know I'm in a hurry and, you know. Um, but this Traveler L4, it's, um, it, again, it is listed as a manual folding lightweight wheelchair suitable for frequent users. And it says that the L4 is intended for indoor and outdoor use. Yep. However, on the um, on like page five of the of the manual that I'm reading, it talks about the maximum weights and you know the seat and everything. But it says, do not operate the wheelchair on streets or roadways. Now well, I'm thinking that's a warning uh, that we shouldn't know, be. No, that you shouldn't be in, in the, the road well, with cars. With cars. Yeah. Um, because like where we live, there's a gentleman that lives in our neighborhood. And uh, we're not going to mention any names. I don't think you know him. We don't know him personally. But he has a motorized wheelchair. And he drives on the street. And I don't think it's very right. safe or wise. Right. But he'll, he'll actually drive down to the grocery store, do his grocery right. shopping, drive back. And he refuses to be on the sidewalk. Right. Now, so I think it's just a warning. Yeah. Because you know what? When we're in port, obviously we're... We're out in the sidewalk and in the streets. Yeah. Well, no matter where we are, whether it's uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, or in St. Thomas, or uh, St. Martin's, or wherever we are, uh, we are out and about on those streets. So, indoor, outdoor. So that's a little bit about the, uh, the wheelchair that I use. So um, we really wanted to talk about that when I travel with the wheelchair, because it is a manual wheelchair, you... Um, you may require some repair tools. Mm -hmm. And I have made up um, this little bag that says wheelchair tools. And actually, in um, the owner's manual for this, it gives you a list of tools that uh, you may need for in the, case of an emergency. For a case of the emergency for the nuts and bolts of your wheelchair. Um, so if something comes a little loose and needs to be tightened. And I always do wheelchair maintenance. Before uh, we leave. Exactly. A couple days before we leave, we open it up, and we kind of test everything. And if anything needs to be tightened, um, we take care of it. But we pack this in our luggage. 
and it's important for you to refer to your manuals for your specific model uh, and manufacturer of your wheelchair because it will tell you what tools you'll need but Frank has everything that we would possibly need for the wheelchair right. we want to tell you it's important to label that wheelchair tools right you are allowed to bring them on uh, in your carry-on although if there are specific <laughs> TSA requirements and uh, we're gonna go through them uh, as it relates to your little wheelchair tool bag uh, because if you go to the uh, TSA website and um, they have uh, linked in the description linked below. in the description and you're gonna see on their page uh, I clicked on uh, the uh, section for kitchenware and tools Mm -hmm. uh, and because I'm not talking about any kind of crazy power tools, these are all basic household tools. The cattle prod was a household I tool. I know. So who we, knew? I, isn't that odd? Cattle prod and duct tape and crowbars. But you know what? We really didn't feel the need to bring those no. with us on our cruise. But there's other things that you may need that's required for your wheelchair. Right. And specifically in reference to the tools that you'd be taking for your wheelchair repairs, uh, the TSA uh, allots only a 7-inch tool. So you're going to need to measure right. your tools before you decide, oh, I'm just going to throw this in right. because it might be over the size. Right. And we also want to advise you that if you do decide to put this in your carry-on, uh, that they should be bound together and it should be labeled wheelchair tools because why? Well, now, in other videos we've mentioned, we are uh, TSA pre-checked pre at the airport. Which means that we've gone through a rigorous background check. Mm -hmm. um, we, it, we paid for it. It was, exactly. a, it was an additional fee to get that and it's good for, I believe, five years. Right. So we get in a special uh, TSA pre-check line where you know nobody has to take their their shoes have, off no shoes off no belt has to come off all of our electronics can stay in right. our bags and it even saves our, so much even time. our 311 bag does not mm -hmm. have to be pulled out and dumped in the bin so that, that being said we put uh, my little tool bag in the outside zipper pocket of our carry-on uh, and that uh, particular trip we had the 21-inch uh, carry-on and the 24-inch check bag uh, and because the Did tool we? yes and because the tools um, were seven inches or less they are approved for your carry-on to the plane so we thought we were all set and yeah, we're, we're, good, to we're go. good to go well we get through and Kevin is you know, on the other side, and he's putting everything on the belt so it's screened because I am being taken on the other side by a specialized TSA agent who's going to do my pat down and swabbing, and we'll talk a little bit about that on the other side. And Kevin's carry on is immediately flagged to be opened up and inspected because they see that there's this bag, this mass bag. Uh, uh, on their screen and they don't know what it is. So, you know, with all our preparation and following the TSA guidelines, Kevin was pulled aside. He had to literally open up and unpack the 21 inch so they could see exactly what it was. So, next cruise, even though this is allowed on a carry-on, we're going to put it in our 24 inch checked bag uh, yeah. that will go in cargo so we don't have to deal uh, with any close inspections and people going through our nicely right. ironed and folded clothes that I've worked so hard to do. And I will and I will tell you it's important. It cannot be seven and a half inches. It can't be eight right. inches. They pulled every single tool out and measured it. Right. And so uh, we're going to show you a picture uh, laid out of exactly what tools we bring so you have an idea. But that is the rule. It's the seven inch tool rule and rule and uh, even if you have like um, drills or any kind of tools that open up they must be measured after they are opened up for full use and then measured end to end and they cannot exceed what is that 
seven inches. There you go. Now, you might also be thinking, why do I need to bother bringing tools? We're on a cruise ship. Of right. course, the cruise ship's going to have tools. Sure, of course they are. Of course they are. But what's going to happen when you're out in port? Right. And uh, the wheel falls off or loosens up or the handlebar comes off. Right. So, you're prepared. Right. Kevin has this in his backpack. But yes, on the cruise ship, they have their maintenance areas where they service scooters mm -hmm. and wheelchairs and can do your repairs. And it's not a problem. We, we were filming. Yes, I remember that. Remember we that? Filming. It was the bathroom, uh, the uh, handicapped bathroom video that we have posted. And opposite where we were filming, it looked like their maintenance area. And all the scooters were in there. And were in there. Now, this was... This was, I have to preface it because I don't know if you talked to the gentleman, but... Um, I did not. Uh, it's specific to NCL. We're not sure if they do this on other cruise lines, and frankly, I'm not sure if they do this on other classes of ships within NCL. But on the NCL gem and on their jewel class ships, they offer um, charging for your scooter. Mm -hmm. So they'll pick it up in your room. Uh, at night, take it to this charging facility, right. and return it to you in the morning. It was really and, cool. And maintain it. I mean, they, yeah. they were fixing some yes. things. Yes, we peeked in, and there were all these scooters, and they were all lined up, all being charged and serviced, um, and it's really great. Just remember that when you're on the cruise ship, you cannot leave your scooter or wheelchair outside your cabin in the hallway. Big no-no. Big no-no. It must be inside your cabin. Now, that being said, um, you know, we're talking about tools, and again, basic tools um, like small drills with drill bits, maybe a, a small hammer, um, screwdriver. Well, hammers you can only put in your checked bags. Yes, and then again, this is our list um, that I pulled, and Don't again... tell them what they yeah, can let's, bring. Let's, let's go down. Now, let's see. Now, we talked about cattle prods. A no-no for your carry-on, but you know what? You can put it in your check bag. That's right. A crowbar. No, no, no not no. in your carry-on. No, but we can pack a crowbar in our check bag. Just in case you need to change a tire. <laughs> now, duct tape can be put both in your carry-on and your check bag. Good to know. He'd like to bring some to put over my mouth sometimes <laughs> on the plane. Hammers, again. Not in your check bag. No, but you can pack it in your check. Uh, Multi-tools without blades. That's without blades. Without so blades. So don't expect you can bring your Leatherman. Uh, Leatherman is a, is a multi-purpose. Um, oh, my. <laughs> no, not, was, a lot, not that. I was wondering I could bring my personal Leatherman with me. Well, that would be awesome. A Leatherman has. Do we like have to pay for his cruise? A switchblade knife. Ah, okay. And it has all these tools in it, too. A lot of hunters use them. Right. Can't bring it because it's got a blade on it. Right. But if it doesn't have a blade um, and it is less than seven inches, you can put it open. in your. Open. If you can put it in your carry on, but if it's. Larger than seven, as we said, it goes in your check. It's all about size, really. It's all it? about size, it usually is. <laughs> uh, screwdrivers. Now, it says that you cannot, on the TSA website, it says that you can't bring uh, screwdrivers. Oh, no, I was looking at the wrong thing. Longer than seven inches. Right. It's, they can go in your check bag. Right. I didn't see this here. Yep. Again, it's the seven-inch rule. Screwdrivers, wrenches, and pliers. You can bring all of that with you. You just have to do your measurements and determine where it goes when you are on your way to your cruise. Mm -hmm. Okay for the carry-on? Not okay. Has to go in your checked luggage. So, that's what we do. And we research and we make sure we are TSA compliant. And you want to do that every time you go. Right. Because the yes. TSA... <laughs> Changes. All the time. <laughs> Depending on what is going on in the United States and the world, uh, there may be changes it's in FAA regulations mm -hmm. and TSA requirements. You just don't know. Uh, and it also could be different per airline. Right. Which will bring us to the next thing that we can talk about. Right. Because we tr we've traveled 
uh, different airlines. Right, we've done JetBlue and Southwest and Delta. And Delta, because we're out of, predominantly. Uh, right, yeah. upstate New York, so that's pretty much we what, love what, Delta. We, what we get. Um, so, uh, and on Southwest, they do not require us to take this step. So we're going to walk you through uh, once we, we get to the airport. Uh, and, and Kevin uh, unloads me and the luggage, okay, gets me in my wheelchair, gets me the luggage. We wheel in, and he sets me by the door. Um, and then he goes off, and he parks the car in the airport parking, and then he takes the shuttle bus back. And I have to tell you that on all the times I time him. He's gone no longer um, than Five ten. Minutes, no, ten minutes. minutes. No longer than ten minutes. And again, we're at the airport at about four in the morning. And and you say, well, oh, of course it, it's no longer than that. There's hardly anyone there. Oh no, there's a lot of people at the airport. Our airport's loaded. Loaded at that with time people. In the morning. We're there two hours ahead of our six a.m. flight, and there's a lot of people. And we've pretty much flown every day of the week and every right. weekend day and it's busy as well. and it's busy yeah. it's crazy that they would be that busy right. at that time of right. the day so he once he gets off the shuttle bus uh he then uh takes our check bag he goes over to the uh airline desk you get in line mm -hmm. and then he gets up there and he checks our bag 50 pounds or less or you're paying use your home weight luggage weight scale to make sure you don't want to pay that extra charge and then he usually um I always see you pointing over at me because um, why? Well, they, 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 you, they, when you check in your bags, you're also, even though we check in online with Delta, when you're checking a bag, they want to know, um, they want to see your, your um, tickets or they and ask I, for your tickets. An ID? So I, an ID. So I usually have to have Frank's identification with me. And I, I just kind of go, hey, he's the guy over there in the wheelchair. And, and every time we, we go on a trip, I'm sitting there, and Kevin's way over there at the uh, desk. And I always see all of a sudden everyone turns, and he's going like that. And I'm like, why are they always pointing at me? What it's because he's a celebrity. What are they talking about? So now I know. So verifying that uh, I am the travel companion, and uh, this is his ID, and this is his ticket. And, uh, and then boom, 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 he checks the luggage, gets the tags. I am in control of the luggage ticket. And then we, uh, we make our way to our uh, to TSA, TSA pre-check line. Oh, and I have got to tell you, if you don't have TSA pre-check, <laughs> you better go get it now. We, the last time we went, which was in February, the line was oh my God. so long, and we were panicking, like, oh, my gosh, we got here early, but, you know. They were snaked They were through. There must have been 250, oh 300 people in line. But then when we approached it, I said, oh, well, that's the regular line. And then we looked to the left where the sign said TSA pre-check, and there was, like, two people in line. Yep, so we just hopped in that we line. Just, boom, boom. We, we surpassed all of them. All right, so what happens uh, once we get to the TSA agent, we show the agent our passport. uh, passports and our tickets so they know mm -hmm. that we're a valid uh, airline passenger. And your ticket, your airline ticket will say TSA pre-check mm -hmm. on it. Uh, and then usually somebody whisks Frank off and Some I'm left holding the bag, well, literally. Well, sometimes it's reversed because sometimes... You know, they push him to get in the line to get the luggage and, you know, st bags on the belt to be s scanned. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still sitting there waiting for the TSA specialist to come and get me. And so, frankly, I like that better because that gives me time to put everything back together. Right. Um, make sure everything's there. Remember the time uh, a couple times ago? where they rushed me through so fast and you were already through right and we left a bag we left our bag we, we lost we were missing one piece of luggage and kevin said are you sure you had it and i said yes i had one on each hand and now we've gone through the scanning process and i see a backpack a shoulder bag and only one carry-on and at that time we had two carry-ons so now we do a bag check before right. we get in the line how so, many bags do we have exactly four okay so we need four at the end i tell kevin don't worry about me you need to worry about yourself getting scanned and the luggage 
I, unless something bad happens, I'll scream, but, you know, worry about, I don't want to be losing luggage. So it was funny that time. We were looking and kind of panicking, and then I saw a TSA agent, and she was holding one of our bags, looking around, questioning, did anyone lose, and I, and I said, oh, my God, Kevin, she's got our bag, and sure enough, it was. That thief. <laughs> so we got our bag back, and off we went to breakfast. But... um. Well, then what do they do to you? Well, what they do to me is, because, you know, I'm on the other side, is the agent comes and they get me and they open um, the dividing, it's a door, and it's specifically to get people in wheelchairs through, because obviously I can't walk and stand and go through the scanning process. So they open the little door, little Dutch door, and they wheel me through to a separate private area. And... Um, if I have a heavy coat on, I have to take it off. But if I just have like a hoodie or a sweatshirt, I'm not required to take that off. And I'm not required to take my shoes off. Now, this all depends on the screener. Right. It all depends. There's so many variables right. to this. And I, so this and I is, never, again, our experience. I never wear a belt. So we don't even have to worry about that. Oh, and I, I have to wear a belt. And I've already given Kevin my watch my wallet, and anything that I don't want to be touched or might lose, Kevin already has it in his backpack. So I really have nothing but myself and my wheelchair. So they take me over, and he, we go through a series of pat-downs. And he usually asks me to lean over so he can pat my back and down near my bottom. And then he, I lean to one side to the right, and then I lean one side to the left. And then he kind of pats my legs really quickly, and then I go through the swabbing process, and they have a special swab, and it's to detect for uh, explosive. explosive residue, and it's a special swab, and we're going to reenact it with this little hand towelette, and basically, he'll swab the front of my hand and the palm of my hand, and then he'll use another swab, and he'll actually swab my wheelchair. Uh, and then he takes the swab and he goes over to a little analysis machine and he slips it in and it reads, the computer reads the swab and gives him the results to find out if there's any explosive residue. So once that's done, I'm pretty much, I'm done. So now we're all done and He's, we're heading he on. He thanks me yep. and hopefully I've, got, I've gotten a nice TSA agent. Some of them are very pleasant and then some of them are all very mechanical and very not pleasant in all business and it's like thank you others are well thank you have a good trip you know it's always nice to hear and then i meet up with kevin and then we're off to breakfast off to breakfast and uh then we go wait for the plane we go to the gate after our breakfast and um I uh, make sure that about 30 minutes before I think we're going to start boarding, because uh, I'm usually the first one on the plane. And the last one off. Right. So 30 minutes before I believe they're going to start taking me on board. It's potty time. It's potty time, number one. Uh, and number two, I have to take my lorazepam medication uh, that uh, is a sedative and it keeps me calm because I am claustrophobic and being in a small plane or any plane uh, is, is just not going to work for me. So uh, I have that prescription that uh, the doctor gave me. So once they announce uh, ready to board, we kind of line up and we present our tickets. They scan our tickets and an agent uh, will take me down the gang... Jetway. Jetway, thank you. The jetway. Jetway for a plane, gangway, gangway for, for the cruise. cruise ship. The jetway and we get to the bottom and what happens is that um, I don't need um, the special chair and the board to make it from the jetway to my seat. And our seat is usually the, usually the first seat on the plane. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, does he need the chair and the board uh, to be able to transport him on the plane? And, and we say, no, it's not necessary because Kevin is usually half carrying me and then I have... Uh, a manual cane, and between him, the cane, and the, uh, the flight attendant, we can get me right there to that first seat. Um, and, and it's not that far, so it's, it's easier than the whole 
to do with the transport chair and the board. But if you're someone who, you know, is um, completely confined, completely confined, paraplegic, paraplegic. Uh, amputee, uh, you, you, you get the chair and they get the board, which connects the jetway to the plane. Um, and that is available. Um, so we get into the seat and uh, Kevin immediately uh, gives me my wheelchair pillow uh, that I, I have that I sit on and then he takes off uh, my wheelchair my foot supports and both my foot supports uh, come off and he puts them in this nice little uh, tote bag that we bought and both of them fit in here Tarjay, yeah. I got it on clearance. I know, it's great. And both foot supports fit in this tote bag, which we keep with us on the plane. Now, they will fold up the wheelchair. And that will go on cargo. It'll go in cargo. But they will not uh, put the chair in cargo with the foot supports on it, since they are detachable. Right. We don't want to get them damaged. Oh, gosh. And we don't want to lose them. So they stay with us on the plane with our carry-on bags. Um, so that's the process, and of course, once we get to our destination, it's in reverse. It's in. It's all in reverse because I'm sitting there, staying comfortable. Everyone is jumping out of their seats, grabbing their overhead, in the overhead compartments, their uh, their carry-ons, and the minute that door opens, I think we're going to do it a little differently this year. I think I'm going to get off the plane and wait for your wheelchair, yeah. though, because uh, in February. Someone tried to take off with your wheelchair. Oh gosh! They're, you know they're either got to keep your eye on that wheelchair. Try, no, on my wheelchair, I have actually a luggage tag on my wheelchair that has my name and address on it. So you know it's not like you know whose is it? It's it's like any piece of luggage. It has a luggage tag on it. Remember and you, that time when? And then, then of course you have left you. Right. I mean, they're either someone's trying to steal my wheelchair, or they're leaving me in the plane. Uh, and, and telling Kevin that everyone's off the plane, and he's going, no, no, he's on the plane, and they're going, no, 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 he's not. And Kevin's like, no, obviously, I'm alone. I have an empty wheelchair, which means I'm missing my husband. He's still on the plane, and he's about to knock over the pilot or, or, or flight attendant to get back on the plane to prove to them I'm still sitting there. And there's sometimes I'm sitting there for like what seems like forever, and I'm sitting there while the cleaning crew, they're already on the plane cleaning the plane, and I'm still sitting there wondering, where's Kevin? Where's my wheelchair? But can you, you got to turn these planes over quick. I know, but I don't want to get lost in the shuffle and end up in Hoboken. Hoboken or wherever. I don't know. <laughs> no offense to anybody in Hoboken. Right. I'm sure it's wonderful. But uh, anyways, so I wait for the wheelchair again uh, in reverse. He takes uh, the the feet supports, he reattaches them to the wheelchair, he gets my wheelchair pillow back on, and then he and the flight attendant hoist me up and get me off the plane in the wheelchair. And up, off we go. Up the jetway, and then we're on our way through the airport. Yep. <laughs> so that's our experience. That's what goes on uh, when we travel. We hope we've helped you. Uh, and uh, put together your uh, wheelchair mechanics tool bag. Exactly. So if you've never been on a plane with a wheelchair or on a cruise ship, um, we're hopefully we're we're going to take away the uncertainty and a little bit of the travel fear, and you'll feel more comfortable. It's it's you know it's all in planning and preparation. That's right. Preparation is key. That's right. So, on behalf of Kevin and myself in Cruising with Wheels, we want you to travel safe and cruise often. Bye. Bye. Is this thing on? Is it on? Yeah. Check. Sound check. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> You're such a nice guy. <laughs> Come before this. You're so far away. <laughs> oh, wait, but the babies have to be up here and locked. They can't be downstairs.
myself. I call this meeting to order. Order? We must have order here. Oh my! 